Um, let's talk about the IPOAM toolkit. Ping and Traceroute are the most commonly used members of this toolkit. Uh, you probably learned about them many years ago and use them many times a day. In this presentation, we'll ask, what can they do? How do they work? What can't they do? And most importantly, how can they be enhanced? Let's start, start with ping. First, what does it do? It tests the liveliness of a reachable interface. You type into your uh, console ping and a network address, you get a response back. It tells you that that network address is both reachable and live. Also by default, it tells you that the node is live. Now let's talk a little bit about how it works. When you send a ping from your pro, uh, from your probing node, you are sending an ICMP echo message to the probed interface. The probed interface sends an ICMP echo reply me message to the probing node. Um, some notes, the echo may enter the probed node through any of its interfaces. It may not enter through the interface that you're probing. The reply, may leave the probe node through any of its interface. So there is no guarantee that ping actually exercises the interface that you're, pinging, that you're probing. Um, the message might have entered through a different interface. It might have also left through a different interface. <clears throat> there are some things that ping just cannot do. For instance, let's say you have an interface, you have many interfaces on a node and some are not reachable, they're less than reachable. So say you have two interfaces, one has a public address that you can reach, the other has um, an unnumbered address or maybe um, an IPv6 link local address or any interface that you cannot not reach from the probing node, you cannot probe that interface. So let's say for a minute that you're trying to ping a router. The router has a loopback address that is publicly interfaced, uh, publicly addressable. You can reach it, but all of the other interfaces are unnumbered. You cannot reach them. You cannot ping those other interfaces. So how can we enhance things? We created a ICMP extended echo request message. The probing node sends an ICMP extended echo request to a proxy interface. The ICMP extended echo request message identifies the probed interface. So going back to our example, we would send an extended echo request to that loopback interface, the interface that is reachable. But the extended request has another piece of information in it. It says, I'm not asking for the status of the loopback. I'm not asking for the status of the interface that I sent this message to. I'm asking for the status of yet another interface. Uh, maybe uh, an ethernet interface that is unnumbered. The proxy interface sends an ICM, extended ICMP echo reply message to the probing node, and it reports the liveliness of the probed interface. Let's take a look at an example here. Nick's machine is the probing interface. It sends an ICMP echo request message, and that message is addressed to interface two, but it has another piece of information in it. The echo request is asking, how is interface three? The node parses the message and answers, 
through interface two, that interface three is up. Some notes on how this works, this extended ping. The proxy interface can be different from the probed interface. And in fact, it almost always is. The proxy interface must be reachable from the probing node. Um, in the example we gave, it was the loopback interface and it must be reachable from the probing node. The proxy interface must reside on the same node as the probed interface. That's generally the case but it might be directly connected to the probed interface too. And here's an example. We send a ping and the minus four means this is a ping. We're identifying the probed interface by name. So the probed interface is GE000. And we're sending this ping to 10.0.1.28. So we're not asking how 10.0.128 is. We're asking how the interface with the name GE000 that is co-resident with 10.0.1.28 is. And we get a response that it's up. There are some security considerations here. I am this, is, this is not enabled by default. Uh, you must enable it explicitly. And generally, you want to uh, put some access control lists up. So you will accept this extended echo request only from nodes inside your domain, maybe only from your own uh, network operation center. We have some implementations on this. Um, it is on Junos 23.r1. You'll find it in the Linux kernel 5.13. Uh, um, it will be in Linux IP utils ping soon. That commit was in progress. It's in Wireshark. And there's also a commit in progress in TCP dump. And with that, I will hand hand it over to Gopi to talk about Traceroute. Yes, thank you, Ron. So, yeah, you will continue to share the same slides. I'll uh, continue. Just tell me when to move them. Yeah, fine. Um, so now we'll talk about uh, Traceroute, uh, background about it and what is the uh, recent enhancement which is mainly useful uh, that we'll discuss. Uh, move to the next slide. Yeah, so uh, if we talk about the background of uh, uh, trace route, what does it do basically? So uh, if you're trying to do a, a probing from the source destination, you want to Find the delivery path between the uh, what are the nodes between. Uh, Hola, Gopi. Disculpa que te interrumpa, pero estamos teniendo una falla con tu conexión. Te escuchamos mal. Uh, Gopi, I think she said in English that your audio is breaking up. There is something with the connection. Are you working or not? Sí, seguimos escuchando eh, entrecortado. The sound is sort of choppy. Maybe you can turn off the camera so for the purpose of the presentation, or maybe it's a microphone. No, it's not very clear. There's a lot of interference. How about Ron? Are you able to hear me? Yes, Gopi, if you'd like, I'll I'll do the presentation for you. Uh, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. I apologize, Gopi. Anyway, what does Traceroute do? It elicits, it discovers the path between a source and a destination. And it does it by eliciting feedback from each node on the delivery path. 
between a probing interface and a destination interface. And it identifies nodes along the delivery path. Notice that it does not identify interfaces along the delivery path. Let's talk about how it works. A probing node sends a series of UTP packets to a desti inter destination interface. It sets the TTL to one on the first packet so that it expires on the first node along the delivery path. And then it increments the DTL on each subsequent packet so that it expires on the next node along the delivery path. When a packet expires on a node along the delivery path, that node sends an ICMP time expired message to the probing node. Now, some nerd notes on traceroute. Regarding the UDP probe messages, by default, the first packet, um, uh, on the first packet, the probing node sets the UDP destination to port 33434, and it increments the UDP destination port on each subsequent packet. That allows it to mat, uh, match probes with responses. Regarding the ICMP time expired message, the source address on the time expired message may not identify the interface upon which the UDP probe arrived. In fact, if the UDP probe was I, uh, IPv4, it identifies the interface through which the ICMP message left the reporting node. That may not be the same interface through which the ICMP message um, arrived on the reporting node. In fact, in many, many cases, it is not the same interface. In IPv6, it's complicated. Um, sometimes it's the same as IPv4, Sometimes it tries to give more, um, a more informative source address, but it really depends on the implementation. You really don't know what that source represents. You know that it's a node on the report, uh, a interface on the reporting node, but you're not really sure which one. So how do we fix this? What we really want to do is identify interfaces along the delivery path. So here we leave the UDP probe message unchanged. That's the same as it always was. We extend the ICMP time, exp uh, time expired message so that it uh, includes some additional information. It includes the interfa interface upon which the probe message arrived the interface through which the message would have been routed had the TTL not expired, and the attributes of those interfaces, their names, their IP, uh, IP addresses, their MTUs. And here is an example usage. And uh, here I, I credit Gopi who uh, wrote this piece of code. He sends a trace route to 3333, asking for extensions. Um, well, actually, what the extension means is he's gonna get the extensions one way or another. This means parse the extensions. And he gets a response from node one. This is the part of the response that you're used to seeing, but you'll also see the received interface was ET000.0. .0. Its address is 10002, and its MTU is 1500. The forwarding interface is um, ET002, which appears to be on the other side of that interface. Who are you sending it to? Actually, Gopi, if you could help out here a little bit and explain the difference between forwarding interface and um, next hop. Yeah, the forwarding interface is the one which uh, the probing probe no interface, uh, probe node will give the information. And the forwarding next hop, that is the, you see the IP address difference, uh, the 20.0.0.2 is the forwarding next hop, sorry, the next hop IP interface. Okay, so you would forward it through 
ET0002 yes. to the next yes. hop, which is yeah. 20.0.0.2. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. And here we take a look at a Wireshark, uh, Wireshark uh, packet dump of the exchange. So Again, here, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Please. Uh, so the ICMP extension message is uh, displaying as part of ICMP multi-part extensions. So in each interface information is um, uh, displaying as, as like an interface information object. So how many interface details you have added as part of the ICMP extension, those many interface objects will be displayed in the ICMP multi-part extension message that we can see in this um, captured white shark. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And again, we have the same security considerations. This is not enabled by default on the router that provides the information. And it should be accessible only from specified source addresses, uh, probably only from your network operating center. And we have some implementations. In Junos, um, it is code complete on the QFX 5K. A kernel commit is in progress in Linux. Um, the same for Traceroute, and it is in Wireshark 3.5. That's what you just saw a slide ago. And with that, we will um, finish our presentation and take some questions. Thank you very much, Ron and Gopi. Uh, we have one question from the Q&A. It's uh, from Douglas Fisher, who uh, is asking, how does RFC 5549 IPv4 routes with IPv6 next hop? Is, uh, how does this RFC relate with this proposal, if there is any relationship? Hmm. I don't think there's any relation. because it is just a trace through the forwarding plane. So I think it should just right. work. But to be honest, I never thought of trying it. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, there's a second question also from the Q&A from Henry Godoy. <clears throat> it is really a great help that these tools it is really a great help that this tool, especially when we have MTU problems with IPv6. Is it possible to mitigate these problems with this tool? You can discover the MTU um, through a path. So yes, if you're trying to figure out, let's say you had a packet and it was discarded due to an MTU problem. Um, let's say for a minute you didn't get the initial ICMP message. You could discover the problem using this trace route, yes. Excellent. Well, this is uh, the last two questions. So thank you very much, Ron and Gopi, for bringing this very, very interesting presentation, actually, to, to LACNA. Thank you very much. Thank you very and much. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Bye.